On this episode, Afri woman meets Njabulo Mbukeni, 26-year-old South African-born award-winning farmer and agripreneur. She runs two farms in Pumalanga, South Africa, employs 16 full-time staff and supplies South African breweries SAB with yellow maize and has expanded to livestock, poultry and vegetables. She started off selling fish and chips to earn a living and take care of her son. Her family didn't have the means to pay for her tertiary education. Mbukene began working at a local school's vegetable garden. The school's garden had effectively stopped operating because of financial constraints, but she offered to cover the cost to reboot the operation so she could gain more farming experience. She went on to lease five acres to grow soya beans, which failed. Next, she partnered with a commercial farmer who was able to provide machinery and other imputes. She took an additional 37 acres and this time it worked. In 2018, Bukene took the biggest risk when she rented another 200 hectare farm in Ermelo, which is closer to where she lives and is bigger. In 2019, she won the South African Brewery Young Emerging Farmer of the Year Award. Dr. Toby Ayodele Kini. I'm the medical director, managing director of Quincy Wellness and Naturopathic Center. Um, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister. And um, do I, I, I'll say I, I try to live a happy, happy, relaxed life. So I'll start with my family background. Um, I, start from, I come from a family of five. My parents, my sister, and my brother, and me. So family of five. We grew up with a lot of family, so I always had a lot of family coming in and out of the house. I used to go to the villages a lot, so I'll say I have a bit of country in me. Um, um, educational background, I studied most of my school in the, in the U.S., University of Maryland, for both grad school, uh, bachelor's, master's, everything was done in Maryland, University of Maryland. Um, and then I worked in the U.S. for a few years doing critical care. However, because of the nature of the business of my mother, who was in the herbal business for, she's been inside it for 20 something years, I've always been in it. So for that reason, I've always learned and I've had it at the back of my mind to integrate. So yeah, that's about my educational background. Oh, of course, I'm a licensed traditional medicine practitioner as well. Something that was a requirement to be able to do the job that I do now. My experience working in Nigeria, doing traditional medicine and then integrating it with Western medicine, my experience has been interesting. It took me a while to realize that I had to integrate. First of all, my mom is a World Health Organization expert on African traditional medicine. And they have been talking and um, advising and recommending for the past 22 years that Africa needs to integrate traditional medicine into its current existing healthcare system. They've been shouting about it for, for two decades now. Other countries have actually done it. They see that it improves patient outcomes. So traditional medicine has its limitations, not in its ability to cure but well, maybe I'll say standardization, the way it's being practiced right now. Western medicine has its limitation, its ability to cure. But if you join the two together, you reduce those limitations, and then you get a positive outcome, you get a healthier patient, you get a healthier nation, you get a healthier population. So um, we've been practically integrating at Quincy for, I'll say, the entirety of our practice. 24, 25 years now, but we officially started integrating last year. And more so than ever with COVID, 
the pandemic, with a lot of things going on, it's more imperative now than before, or now than ever that the world is going back to their roots. Everybody is going back to their roots. We as Africans, we as Nigerians, we need to go back to our roots. Um, I don't want to be a bit, I don't want to be too controversial, but I always tell people that we are still in bondage in Nigeria here in many aspects. And it is also translated in the way we practice our healthcare, the way we manage our health, what we eat, what we consider food, how we live our lives. Most of us just feel that um, herbs will damage your kidney or your liver or affect your ability to procreate. But they have no problem popping a paracetamol tablet in their mouth every day after work. That is guaranteed to give you liver failure if you use it more, for more than seven days. It's fine to do that, but it's not fine to eat leaves that has been made for us for our, for our, for our consumption. So when we're having all these problems in Nigeria now, I talk to a lot of young women, fibroids. It's like, it's, it's, it's like everybody and their grandmother has fibroids. Fibroids, infertility is a big problem. People are just dropping dead from diabetes, from high cholesterol, from high blood pressure, from cancer now. I mean, it's becoming a problem. Oh, where did this come from? It is because we are not doing what we're meant to do. We're not looking inwards. We're not doing the right things. We're not, we're just focusing on Western medicine. Focusing on Western medicine and we're black African people. Eating Western food, taking Western medicine and not, and, 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 and doing things that are alien to our bodies. And of course it's causing problems. So, I would say that has been my experience as well as my, my challenge. So my aim for the next few years is just to be doing a lot of, I will say re-education. We're educated in Nigeria, a lot of us are educated, but we need to re-educate ourselves. And part of what we're doing by doing traditional, integrative, alternative, whatever you want to call it, medicine is going back to our roots. And that requires a lot of re-education. Like, hey, what we have in our country is actually very good for us. We don't need to suffer if in, in sickness or in disease. Everything is actually here and they work. What inspires me actually to keep going, to wake up every day and, and do the job of helping people, I think is results. Even if you see one person at a time and you get the results, I'm a very results oriented person. And not just results in terms of um, achievement, but results in terms of has, can this person, can this person be good enough to go out on his or her own? And whatever I've told you, whatever you've learned, whatever you've, you've been able to do, that you, you're, you're better now, you're a better person. Can you, can, you, can you go preach out the good news and be an ambassador for your own health? So that's, I think, my inspiration to say, you know, it doesn't matter how stressful, because, you know, it's very difficult to educate people, to re-educate people, especially if you have a bias at the back of your mind. But the challenge of doing that is an inspiration for me as well. Like I, 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 I enjoy seeing the look on people's faces when they get that aha moment. Like, okay, wow, I've been doing this wrong, and this is what I can do right, and I've been doing it right, and this is what I, this is what I'm getting, and and that to me is um, is inspiration enough. Then definitely um, my own personal experiences with my own health, where Western medicine failed me. I think has inspired me to say, you know what? Nobody else has to go through this. You know, what I, you know, some people go through things in life and they say, 
Well, since I was able to overcome it, I'm not going to tell anybody about how I overcame my problems. And I'm going to keep it to myself. We even have part of your education. We have Yoruba adage that says that if your if your yam is sweet, you cover your mouth. You cover your mouth while you're eating. So people don't know. And I just think that's something that doesn't have to be. So from my personal health experiences, my inspiration is hey, whatever I have been through with my health, nobody else has to experience. Nobody else has to experience that. So I'm going to do whatever it takes. Even if I see this person hasn't even gone through it, but on his way or her way to get, getting through that, that challenge, I want to do whatever it takes to say, look, don't, I don't want you to experience what I've experienced. So please do this and do that. Trust me, in five years from now, you're going to remember me and be like, ah, thank God she told me to just drink more water. Or whatever, it, whatever little thing, you know, it is. So I think those are my inspirations. Powerful looks command respect, they say. The perfect body. The perfect grooming. And ultimately, the perfect skin looks, style, and grooming makes the ultimate man. I've found a ridiculously easy way to make my skin always feel epic. My name is Neo. I found Blemiviv. And now my skin finally makes sense. Actually, as a woman in business, um, I would say it's been great. Nigeria is changing. Our culture is changing. It's not like th even just 20 years ago where women were, were just to be seen and not to be heard. We're, we're emerging everywhere and um, women, women are actually being more appreciated now than ever before. In the field of healthcare though, it's, um, it's been, especially in the field of traditional medicine, it's been a man's business. But I think barriers have been broken over the years and people like my mother have made it, have made, have made it easy for me to transition into it. So I can't say I'm, I'm I'm suffering or I'm struggling to be a woman in business. It's more of, okay, the environment we're in, how do we, the challenges of just doing business in Nigeria, the challenges of doing business in a pandemic, the challenges of doing business in our society. I'll say those are the, the issues, but I love challenges and we've been able to, with each, with each challenge is an opportunity to learn. And I enjoy that I'm able to impart knowledge, impact wisdom, and heal, help people. You know, the physicians treat God heals. But people don't know that um, as God, when God made the plants, he had already told them what to do. So they do heal. And you don't need to pray about it. It's, or God has already, um, he has spoken, and it is just, and he does, his word does not, he doesn't return his words back. So when people say, oh, the herbs will not cure, will not, I'm like, no, it will, because it's meant to do it. Purple leaf will not do the job of mango, and mango will not do the job of orange. Each of them have been planted to do their job. So all you just have to do is just take it, and it will work. So that, you know, just changing people's lives, one day, just a little at a time is enough for me. And even with my, I'll say with my staff strength, you know, all of them came from just purely medical backgrounds. And I'm, we're, they're, they're learning and they're like using stuff and they're like, wow, I'm getting better. And their families are learning. So just from my office alone, from my clinic alone, we're already impacting hundreds of lives. Then also we believe in, um, I'll say outreaches because Nigeria is tough. Healthcare is expensive. 
And that does it because you don't have money does not mean that you should not have access to healthcare. So even as we are in Ikoi here, as I am in Ikoi here, we have programs for people that are that can afford healthcare to make sure that basic medications, basic lab tests, things that will just keep that person alive because God forbid if that person dies from a simple illness, the livelihoods, the, the, his children, his, his wife, that's the end of them. So I, it's not, it's expensive, but I don't believe as much in making so much money as I believe in leaving a legacy. If that makes sense to you, you, you want to be, you want to be a, a, a you want to be a legacy lever, and of course, leave inheritance for your grandchildren and all of that. You know that's great and be comfortable, but that's not what life is all about. If you live your life and you die with a lot of houses but no impact, then you have just wasted an entire lifetime. So my my passion is to make sure I leave a legacy of changing lives one at a time with their health, with their mindset, with their mentality. If you change your mentality, you change your health, you're a better person. <laughs> oh boy, winning you was so easy. I just couldn't stand those your powerful shots. That's what happened. <laughs> really? <laughs> Let's go to my place for dinner. is so nice. It's true unripe plantain flour. True unripe plantain flour is delicious. Yes, true unripe plantain flour is what I serve my husband for swallows. It's easy to prepare. Fortify with vitamin A, low in sugar and cholesterol, rich in fiber that helps the heart, builds and strengthens the bone, and his energy level <laughs> is Boosted. Through unripe plantain flour, no additives, 100% natural, a product of Pali Agro Products Nigeria. Through unripe plantain flour, available in all leading stores nationwide. So, to every woman out there, to every young girl, and every teenager, young woman, college student, young mother, single mother, widow, widow whatever, whatever it is. I just want to tell you, look, do not give up. Life is too short to stay hung up, to stay... Life is too short to, to, to waste time over petty things and to wait till you make your big break. You can start small and grow big. You know, everybody should, everybody should have a story to tell when they're telling their grandchildren, this is how I made it in life. And nothing, nothing is not sellable. I always tell people that you cannot not sell anything. I started off as a medical profession and I'm selling leaves and herbs now as my profession. And it's, so, it's totally different from what I had at the back of my mind when I started school, you know, 15 years ago. So just remember that you know, you don't know what life has in store for you. And no matter what it is, learn to be self-sufficient. It's enough, enough is enough to say, you know, I need to depend on a man to, to, to survive. I need to depend on a man to buy what I want. I need to depend on a man to do this. No, you don't need to depend on any man. You can get what you want by yourself. You just have to work a little harder and work a little more um, and, and have that integrity at the back of your mind that no matter what, I'm going to stick, stick to what I'm doing. And don't do anything you do not have a passion in doing. Don't do anything because others are doing it. Don't do anything because, oh, it makes money. Because you're going to come to a point in your business that if you do not have passion for it, you will fail or you will give up or you will give hope. So just trudge on, pray have faith, um, have the confidence and the boldness in yourself that I'm smart, I'm beautiful, I have my stuff put together and I can do all things. And you'll go far with that. And teach your children that too, your girl children, if you have girl children at home, tell your girl children, the girl child, you are beautiful. Dark skin, light skin, doesn't matter. You are beautiful, you are smart, those affirmations, those that your children are your future, they are my future, they are my investment. Those affirmations will make a big impact in your life and in the life of that child. So yes, talking to Dr. Toby 
from Quincy Wellness and Naturopathic Center. Love you guys.